Hi everyone, for those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Christine, but I go online as Sostine. And I am a doctor, a sewist, an embroiderer, and a YouTuber. I'm also a bunch of other things, such as a mom, a wife, a gamer, and so forth. Personally, I think this wearing of different hats is absolutely essential to my personal happiness, since doing a lot of varied things keeps things interesting and new. The single most common question that I'm asked is, how do you balance doing all these different things? And I thought I'd tell you about the things that I do to manage my hobbies and as well as my time, and also show what I'm currently working on and how I balance all of it. So starting off, some background information on me. Yes, I am in fact a full-time physician in the United States. I am a board certified MD. This means that I'm a full-time attending doctor at my local hospital where I practice anesthesia. I provide anesthesia to patients going through surgery, labor, and other procedures where help is needed. I also do more specialized anesthesia techniques such as nerve blocks, provide anesthesia for open heart surgery, and so forth. I also help in non-surgical areas of the hospital. For instance, I will frequently help with intubations in the ER, ICU, um, to do central lines and arterial lines, and I generally just do whatever work that needs doing at the hospital. So that's my day job, and I absolutely love it and I feel very privileged to get to practice medicine with so many incredible doctors, nurse anesthetists, nurses, technicians, housekeepers, and so forth. Now, if I get enough comments asking, I can absolutely go into more depth on this as a future video, but what does this mean? This means that I did go through four years of an undergraduate, four years of medical school, and then four years of residency, which includes one year of internship. For those of you who don't know, internship is the first year of your residency. For all of undergraduate and much of medical school, I always kept a part-time job, either as a shop girl, a waitress, a tutor, a college TA, and so forth, since my financial aid package didn't really cover everything that I needed. This was actually really nice, since I quickly learned how to balance doing multiple things to get the job done, so I could balance studying, hanging out with friends and going on dates, when to work at my jobs, manage my club, etc. When I did go into medical school and residency and the academic portion got ramped up, I was able to better cope with everything and still keep hobbying. Yes, I did in fact sew through all of undergrad and as well as medical school and residency. So now I do have a full-time job. For anesthesia, a full-time job usually takes about 60 to 80 hours a week. This just seems to be all of medicine to be honest. Almost every physician I know that works full-time works at least 60 hours a week. However, I do want to add the caveat that when picking a specialty in medicine, you often have the option of how you want those hours distributed. I have a lot of hospitalist friends who do incredible work taking care of inpatients at a hospital. They tend to cluster that work, so they work seven days, basically on call the entire week, and then have the whole of the next week off. So they really work 26 weeks a year minus their vacations. Other friends prefer clinical work where they are, they're in the clinic nine to five, Monday to Friday, not counting all the extra time that they stay late afterwards to finish up their notes and charts and billing. And of course, ER docs tend to work about 12 hour shifts and they'll work certain number of shifts a month. Um, I have a lot of OBGYN friends who work as laborers where they work seven 24 hour shifts a month. Now, are those 24 hour shifts really 24 hours? No, they tend to be about 26 to 27 because they tend to stay after to help around and do other things. Now, anesthesia is my field. We tend to be slightly different. We work in 24 hour shifts called call, where we work one hospital for 24 hours, but then get the next day completely off. Oftentimes the day before will be a half day. So that's part of my secret. I do have a lot of random full days off in the middle of the week. Those are the days where I tend to do the hardest part of the gown, whether it's drafting the pattern or fit it, fitting that pesky sleeve or doing a ton of hand sewing while watching TV. Now to some more general advice, but before I get into that, I wanna take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. One thing I talk about a lot when I talk about sewing is how often I combine the hours and hours of hand sewing that I do with television shows and documentaries. I love watching a good TV show while I stitch. Currently, I'm rewatching all of Star Trek. Alas, Netflix only has two excellent series, Next Gen and DS9. However, I honestly never really liked Dr. Crusher as a doctor who has a very, very loose grasp on patient consent and autonomy. And my favorite has always been Bones McCoy. Now, I know for a fact that you can in fact get the original series if you're in England. So I use Surfshark VPN to connect from wherever I want. And in this case, I connected from London, the UK, and suddenly I not only just have TOS, I have Star Trek Enterprise as well. Brilliant. Time to keep working on my Victorian lady doctor outfit with my favorite Star Trek doctor. 
Moreover, using Surfshark VPN, it's not just a great VPN to help protect my information and get me movies that are only available through streaming in other countries like Pride and Prejudice. They're also a fabulous antivirus software and I've been using their services to keep my computer clean of bugs. Right now, you can sign up for Surfshark VPN and get 83% off and three months free using the link in my description. Surfshark has a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can try it risk-free. Thank you again, Surfshark, for sponsoring this video. So my tip number one is to journal and record what you do and set realistic goals. Journaling means that you record everything that you do and you can look back and see how much you've accomplished and that really pushes me to go forward faster and better. Every morning when I wake up, I either go straight to work or sit with a cup of coffee before my toddler wakes up, which is pretty doable since I wake up at 5.15 and my toddler wakes up at 6. I sit with a cup of coffee an English muffin and my journal and I usually make a list of to-dos. Today Malcolm will be going to preschool and I have half a day of work so I can probably expect to get around four hours of stuff done during the day, realistically. In general, I try to break down the to-do list into 30-minute chunks if possible. If there's a large task like pleat the entire Victorian lady doctor's skirt, instead of putting a two-hour ta task on my list, I break it down into four smaller tasks such as make one pleat in the front, pleat the right back three pleats, pleat the left back three pleats, sew down the back pleats using a machine. So that way now those now the entire pleating job is broken up into four pieces. That way, even if I don't finish all two hours of it, I still feel like I've accomplished a lot. And the truth is, even if I haven't done all of it, I have and I still get to check off several boxes. I then do the chores of the day while checking the things off, but it always makes me feel really warm and proud to do all of it. Also using pretty fountain pens adds to the experience, of course. I always love a nice glitter or sheen ink. Now on days when I'm post-call and I'm just beyond exhausted, I tend not to make a to-do list. I'm just too tired after 24 hours to really make a list down and expect to get any of it done properly. Instead, I make a things I did list instead, and this way I can congratulate myself for things I've done instead of scolding myself for not doing more. And all these accomplishments spur me on to do more and more. Another thing I do is something I call the one hour a day rule. So while I do have days like this where I can work on multiple projects for many hours due to preschool, those days are relatively rare. More common are days where I work either eight to 10 hours or I have off entirely and I spend that whole day with my family. For those days where sewing all day is not an option, oftentimes by the time that Malcolm is asleep, dishes are done and my husband and I are sitting on the couch, I'm just too tired to do much of anything. For those days, I implement the one hour a day rule. I have a box of hand sewing that needs to be done or pleats or hemming, and just like there's always so much hand sewing. So I generally in, sit in front of the TV show and I will just make myself stitch some of this out while I watch some TV. Usually the hard parts, making the pattern, putting together the structural portions, putting in the sleeve have already been done, but the outfit will still need a good 48 hours of hand sewing to look great. For those parts, they're usually done while I'm relaxing at the end of the day. Hand sewing for me is just relaxing. So even just doing an hour a day, means I'll get through that much more of the slow parts that make the gown look really good over a long period of time. Now, after the one hour of hand sewing is up, oftentimes I'll still want to continue. And I, I will feel mo so motivated that I may actually get up and do more sewing, or sometimes I'll just keep going and keep finishing the seam. Other times I realize I'm just so super exhausted and I'll just want to put the entire sewing basket away and watch TV. Either way, I've already done a lot and that one hour will add up. So again, this doesn't mean that I only do an hour a day. This means that every day I do at least one hour of day. After a week or two, you'll be absolutely shocked at how much work that's come to. Finally, I like to work on multiple projects at once. This is really helpful because oftentimes I'll hit a part of the project I find less interesting or requires a good 12 hours of hand sewing before I can hit the next step or so forth. This means that depending on my mood and my emotional availability, there's always a different project I can work on that's at a different stage of production. So for instance, sometimes I'll just be like, oh my God, I really want to pleat something or I really want to work on some trim. And there's often a, times a project where I'm just kind of sewing on some trim. 
or I'll be like, oh my God, today I really want to draft a pattern. I just really feel the itch to like create something from scratch. And for those days, I often have a project where I still have to do a mock-up and figure out the fitting and also, or perhaps even draft a pattern from scratch. And other times I'll be like, I'm too tired. I just want to hand sew. And that's where my basket of hand sewing comes in. So there's all these different projects that I can do in different stages. So in that way, I'm kind of diversifying myself and I have these multiple projects that I can work on concurrently to so all move forward. So all of my projects in all usually take about two to four months to finish, even if I'm working on them all every day, just a little bit, because I just don't feel like working on this one thing back to back. Completely honestly, if I did just focus on one project, I could probably get that project done in about three to four weeks. So for instance, I'm currently working on several different projects in different stages. I have a Victorian lady doctor outfit that's been a slow burn due to the hours and hours of hand sewing. I think this project has had at least 50 hours of hand sewing in it already, and it's not even more than 50% done. I'm working on a lavender embroidered redding goat for my doll, Evelina. She's a ball jointed doll. And I, you may remember from a previous episode, I was working on her corset. I got down to stuck doing something I hated, the skirt supports. But now that I have finished those, it's been full steam ahead. Another project I'm working on is a cottage core nurse joy. This one should be only about 12 to 15 hours for the whole outfit, but I've been taking it slow, maybe half an hour every two days. So it'll take a little bit longer than it otherwise would, probably over around two months, but I am very excited to wear this come summer. Meanwhile, on my computer, I have a few other projects going. I have a court suit for Matt and a court suit for me with some really striking flowers and some really cool uh, pheasant embroidery. And I've just been kind of working on those. I think I've been working on his quartz embroidery for over 24 hours and I'm probably a third done. And if by some miracle I run out of hand sewing projects, I always have a sh white shirt or a white shift that I'm working on at all times. All of the shirts that Matt wears under his court suit are hand sewn by me entirely by hand using a historically accurate method because I love the way that it looks and I find it fun and relaxing to have something like that in my pile. And look at these pleats. I'm obsessed with these pleats. So with that, I think that mostly covers how I manage my time. Honestly, it's a balance of finding the right job with the right type of hours and just slow but steady going. I'm not particularly fast or talented. I just like to go slowly. Thank you again for watching and I should be back next week with my normal sewing videos with a video on making the Victorian Lady Doctor outfit. So please remember to subscribe and don't forget the bell. Hi guys, Editing Steen here. So there was a section in the video that I originally wrote into the script and then took out because it was just too personal. But I don't feel right not saying anything about the matter. Um, my husband is a full-time dad and he loves doing it. I love that he loves doing it. I think he does an amazing job. And honestly, it's what lets me work these 24 hour shifts. Cause you don't, it's really hard to get a nanny for 24 hours straight. Oh, hi Nightly. I've been incredibly lucky that he's wanted to do that and he's really good at it. And um, it lets me do those shifts that gives me the full day off. But in any case, I just wanted to add that that does help me with my time management. I didn't put it as a tip because like, like it's not really a tip. It's just like something that I personally do. And it's a decision that we made that we're very happy with. And I wanted to add that in particular because I want to say thank you, Matt, for doing that and for being so, so good at it. And you're such an awesome father. So thank you. Also, thank you for the puppy. Okay, well, that's it. Um, thanks for watching again.